In this video, iPhone SE leaked on Weibo, Apple's Skunk Works Robotics Department. And 2024, the year of the iPad. Early May is German's latest prediction of the week. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. According to a leak via Leander on X, details of Apple's upcoming iPhone SE update have appeared on Weibo in China, along with an image. Most of the details line up with what's expected already, with a few exceptions. Looking much like the iPhone 12 to 14, but with a single camera, the device is said to feature a 6.1 inch 60 hertz OLED display from BOE, an A16 Bionic, a 48 megapixel main camera with optical image stabilization and a 12 megapixel FaceTime selfie camera, a type C USB connector, old school notch as opposed to the current dynamic island, Bluetooth 5.3 and an IP68 rating with an expected price of 499 and a release date in quarter one of 2025. So I have to say there's a few red flags here for whether this is legit. The design all sounds right along with the display. Now we've heard recently that Apple was trying to drive down Samsung on the panel price to sub $30 so using BOE to provide these does make sense but it would have probably made sense regardless as Samsung are generally providing Apple's more advanced displays for the Pro models with that dynamic frame rate, ProMotion displays, as opposed to the budget options. Nonetheless, nice for the SE to get its first upgrade from LCD to OLED. About time. Similarly, the cameras sound about right. A single rear sensor makes sense, but may get a good one so that you have the flexibility to crop in for optical zoom and the like. The two big issues that I take, though, are first, the chip. In every previous SE, Apple has used the current flagship chip, just around six months after being introduced in the main iPhone line. The A16 Bionic arrived in the iPhone 14 generation, and if the release date is accurate, that would be three years old when it lands. Unlikely, I think. The main reason for that is that people buying these budget phones are likely conscious of how long they're going to be usable for, more so than people running out to get the latest and greatest because they're going to do the same again in a year or two's time. The SE is often the choice of businesses too for field sales teams, which means they're not looking for lackluster performance or short life expectancy. They want something they can buy and keep using. My second issue is the lack of the dynamic island and that's now in the base iPhone models. Apple's likely to have more developers taking advantage of live activities and things like that, which it's probably not super expensive to make happen versus having the notch. Dynamic Island is quite rapidly becoming iconic of the iPhone lineup, so it would make a lot of sense to add that consistency across the line. I'm also not convinced that it will take Apple until the new year to bring an SE. Now, the previous versions did come in 2016, 2020, and 2022, all in March or April, though. So unless we get a surprise release in the autumn alongside the main iPhone line, in which case maybe this year's iPhone chip might make sense, 2025 in the spring might be accurate. It's always been in the spring so far. But would you consider an iPhone SE with these specs for just $499? Let me know in the comments. Next up, it turns out that Apple has an internal Skunk Works team working on their AI and home robotics initiatives, according to the Germanator in one of the more appropriately named the normal Power On newsletters, saying, Creating a unified smart home strategy remains an Apple goal, but the vision has been hard to fulfill. The need to finish up the Vision Pro got in the way, I'm told, diverting resources away from the smart home efforts. Now, I would personally love to see Apple get more serious about their home automation, given that HomeKit has been pretty lackluster compared with the fanfare it arrived with years ago. Now, it seems that Apple is investigating everything from a HomePod with a screen that we've talked about in the past. Check out the Aluminium podcast with Sigmund Judge for more discussion on that, to full-blown humanoid robots that would follow you around the house and do household chores like washing the dishes. Now, I could have sworn that we already have a robot that does dishwashing, but maybe I dreamed it. But if you thought that Vision Pro was a glimpse into dystopia, a humanoid robot following you around like a lost puppy might just be the next step and it'll make Vision Pro look like a steal. And in other Gurmy news, 2024 is set to be the year of the iPad, he says, following 2023, the year of the no iPads. The latest date to expect iPads to release being the week of May the 6th, with Apple stores set to get a point of sale refresh later that week, just as he reported they would have done when he thought they were coming in late March. The delays are being blamed on the complexity of the new OLED displays for the iPad Pro, with those devices likely to be thinner, brighter, with FaceTime cameras moved to the landscape side and potentially MagSafe for charging in some flavour or another, as well as new Pro keyboards with a more Mac-like feel. Think aluminium. 
Great name for a podcast. German did spoil himself for me a little bit, though, saying that the big issue with iPads isn't the hardware, but the software, and that it still can't replace the Mac. It's not supposed to replace the Mac. What if I told you people are walking into an Apple store to buy an iPad, and they know that they're not buying a Mac? What if the people who wanted a Mac bought a Mac? The iPad is different, and it should be. And I know I do this rant pretty often now, but why do you want everything to be the same? The iPad is allowed to have its own way of working. You work differently on your Mac and your iPhone, and it's okay. People who don't use a Mac every day love the way their iPad works. They like the simple way you can get stuff done. Not everyone wants 45 windows across seven displays. Some people like focusing on one thing at a time. Also expected in May, alongside the new iPad Pro models, is the iPad Air refresh. Again, moving the FaceTime camera, all being well, to the long side, and introducing a new larger model with a 12 point nine inch display so that you don't need to pay pro money to get a bigger iPad. These will keep their 60 hertz LCD displays however, likely come with an M2 while the pros go up to an M3 and keep the lower price point with the 12.9 inch Air coming in likely at $200 premium over the 10.9 inch model which is in line with the Mac display price differences and the iPad Pro before the larger model got bumped up to a mini LED display and leaving the 11 inch on LCD displays. Currently the iPad Air is $599 so that would put it at $799 but you never know there might be some price increases coming fingers crossed there aren't. The iPads I actually care about however the base iPad and the iPad mini aren't set to be updated at this phase of the year. The mainstream iPads, those still powered by A chips inherited from the iPhone lineup, are likely to be updated in September alongside the iPhone and Apple Watch releases. Followed in October, I had assume, by the M4 like last year, and if we're lucky, the M4 Pro and M4 Max MacBook Pros also like last year, assuming Apple completes the M3 lineup by WWDC with the M3 Ultra chips and the sadly neglected Mac Mini. And speaking of WWDC, we are launching our t-shirt again so we did it before we uh crowdsourced your images of your memojis this year we're going to do memojis and uh vision pro personas if you want to get in on the action and uh you can submit them at the link that's down there it's icavedave.com forward slash dub dub but let me know if you are in the market for an ipad and which one you're after down in the comments and we have an iCave answers to do if you've got a question for me down in the comments hashtag iCave answers just like team kinetics media has done team kinetics asks iCave answers in 1982 a presenter on tomorrow's world held up a cd and said this is the compact disc it will revolutionize computer technology tech has moved on so quickly since the early 80s how long will it be before we look back on early vision pro reviews and laugh at how outdated it is and what comes after spatial computing? I have no idea what comes next. And to be completely honest, the fact that we were even looking at CDs in 1982 blows my mind that it was that early. We didn't really start to get music on them until, what, like the early 90s, I think? But, you know, uh, CD-ROMs, pretty good. 700 megs on just a, a thin little disc. And when you compare that to 1.44 megabytes that you could get onto a floppy disk incredible like i see why apple decided to dump the floppy disk when the imax came out the original imax and i understand why the cd-rom got dumped when the macbook airs came out i get all of this but there's no way of knowing what will come next i mean we were also looking at vr stuff like in the late 80s early 90s it kind of disappeared for a couple of decades, but now it's back, and who knows what's going to be next. I, I do think that spatial computing is pretty much almost the end game because it's like bringing computing to everywhere, but I think it will be the form factor that changes, so it will be more like my glasses that I'm wearing right now and a, a lot less like ski goggles in most cases. Perhaps the ski goggle style thing will be more like the kind of holodeck uh, VR experiences that we have right now and this will be more for your mixed reality so that rather than the headset having to recreate your environment it can kind of just monitor your environment and your head movements with accelerometers and also cameras and lidar and use that to just project the stuff that you want to look at separately from your real world then you're gonna have far less lag all that sort of stuff it's going to be very good but you won't be able to immerse yourself in the same way and it might not separate us in exactly the same way obviously everyone keeps talking about you know could this be on a contact lens i mean maybe but batteries are going to have to get pretty bloody good for that um i don't know i don't know 
maybe we're going to have those receiving something from something else. But right now, let's just enjoy the world that we have. Let's enjoy how magical the technology is. And one day soon, I might even be able to use the Vision Pro myself. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We're going to be doing our live shows. They are getting rebranded. I did a new branding for the last one. Um, and then I realized that Live Cave Dave is a much better name. So Live Cave Dave will be on Friday night, 10 p.m. UK time, whatever that might uh, translate to in your time. But there's going to be a reminder sitting on the channel. So you can go and uh, set a reminder. And let's try and do as many videos as we can this week. It'd be really good. And also, uh, Aluminium Podcast, make sure you subscribe to it because uh, I really like doing it. And I want more people to come on and be cool guests on it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to the Patreons. If you want to be a Patreon and uh, get preferential access to me, you can message me through that platform very, very easily. Um, and tell me what you would like as a Patreon perk. Uh, let's do a like name your own perk thing. It starts really cheap. It's like a pound a month. Uh, or you can go up a bit higher and help support the channel. And I appreciate all of these lovely people very, very much. Love you all. See you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.